The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of this station or its sponsors. Warning! This program contains strong adult language, violence, and brief nudity. It's everything you're looking for. Welcome to Whispers on AM 1600 WKKX, the Valley's Watchdog. It is 8.06 p.m. Couldn't tell you the degrees because Lola's little thingy's broken. <laughs> this week, I can tell you, it is a balmy 68 degrees in downtown Wheeling as we speak under dark skies. The sun's already gone. Hey, it's getting fun. Yeah. The darker outside it gets, the better this show should get. <laughs> Whispers is brought to you locally by the... To- to- uh, <laughs> toy and Plastic Brick Museum in the all-American town of Blair, Ohio. Dan to- Brown and everybody there welcomes you to Whispers and A Journey Within. I don't know their tagline yet. <laughs> so- well, we're still working on that, but, okay. but Jordan will hopefully remember both of those next <laughs> week. He looks at me and I'm just like... Come on, dude. (laughs) He's been there so often. I know. We built Legos last week. You guys have captives in pins in that castle, and you can't remember where they are. It's it's been a long day. We threw them in the dungeon, and we'll never speak of them again. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) We don't speak of things like that. Uh Well, Jordan's got an excuse for why he can't remember this kind of stuff. He's very worried. Uh, He's very anxious because of the uh, Large Hadron Collider, which he thinks is going to destroy the world in October. We're hoping he lasts till his birthday. Well, see, it's funny. My, my grandpa... When is your birthday? The 24th. Oh, you'll be gone by and then. I'm the, 20, <laughs> I'm the 29th. Cheyenne is the 28th. So let's hope it lasts till Halloween. Well, well <laughs> we might not happy, be around. Happy this Halloween! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Tell you what, I, I was... I called my mom right before the show, and she said my grandpa was asking if I can, if I got a physical or got checked out for the doctor. I said, well, what's the point? I'm going to die in October <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, but go ahead and tell the story about the little lights and stuff that they're seeing. Oh, it's crazy. For for those of you that don't know it, the, how do you say the H word? Hadron, I believe. Hadron, the Large Hadron Collider. Uh, what what it does, it like splits an atom. It's like 17 miles in a big circle under in a tunnel underground in underground. Switzerland. And, uh... It, it it splits particles and gets them going as close to speed as light as they can. Well, they're testing the Big Bang uh, theory is what yeah. they're trying to do. <laughs> BS. Okay. And then... Uh, you don't th- believe in the Big Bang? Uh, God did it. Oh, oh, no. You don't think God can do a Big Bang? You, God's like, hey, I want to invent a world. Boom! Bam! It's there. What are you talking about? It makes perfect sense to me. Okay. Anyway, what this thing is supposed to do is collide these particles or the protons all at the same time and then... Then we don't know what's going to happen. So uh, there's, they're saying that it's going to have like a create miniature black holes that are going to last for a few seconds. They're not supposed to do anything, but, you know, who's ever been too close to a black hole no matter what size? Well, whoever that guy was, he isn't here anymore. It's a black hole. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen <laughs> Hawking. <You're so laughs> optimistic. Well, I'm just saying you can't get to a black hole because a black hole. I mean, light I can't know. escape a black hole. I have no chance. So, <laughs> if the black hole comes, I'm its first victim. So, Jordan's right after me. Well, actually, Switzerland is its first victim, yes. you know. They might be neutral now, but they won't be neutral then. So. They'll be positively charged. <laughs> yeah, we protein. Actually, this won't be there. Sometimes uh. I worry about y'all really bad. Anyway, like, uh, I read an article today that they're already seeing, like, these crazy lights over the sky. You know, like, whether or not they're UFOs. I mean, they're, they're saying they're UFOs. You know, just because they see lights, and they're like, oh, my God, it's a UFO. Well, maybe they're but, drawn by the energy. But what if it's, like, the whole, like, black hole starting? It's creating all these, like, energy lights flying around over this area, and it's about to implode How the Earth. How many times have you seen Star Wars? <sighs> oh, wow. <No>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because, see, I'm Jordan's I don't like, know. oh, well, these could be the mini black holes. I was like, Jordan. They're orange and red. They're not yeah. black. What yeah, but it could be starting. Like, everything's got to, like, swirl around in a circle before it turns into a... Black hole. 
black hole. Well, I saw it. <laughs> a whirlpool. We need to get Stephen Hawking's on here and he yeah, explain this thought. to you. He it's actually not. took a bet. He said, you know, 100 bucks, it ain't going to work. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, when Stephen Bar- Hawking's is taking a bet and, you know, Oh, what does, what does he know? Microsoft Sam type <laughs> voice, you know. But <laughs> he's, he's, just, well. he's just the smartest man on earth. Yeah, yeah he doesn't know what he's talking about. Sure. So, you know. Sure. All right, well, uh, you want to go ahead and bring on Anthony? All right, we got okay. Anthony. Uh, we have a big conference coming up in Morgantown, the Morgantown Paranormal Conference. Oh, I remember. Anthony called one of our very first shows. Yes, yeah, and right. uh, we got him coming back on. Is he with us now? He certainly is. Anthony. Hi, Anthony. Hi, how are you guys? Good. Tell us about this conference, man. Well, the conference has actually come a long way since I last called you guys. Um, I think when I called you, we had six speakers. We're now up to 14 speakers. All right. And uh, we're shooting for 15, so hopefully we'll get that one in there. Um, We're having speakers on the technical, metaphysical, and even now the academic aspect of the paranormal. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's it's going to be a really diverse uh, group of lecturers, and I think it's going to be great. Um, we're going to have an expo all day, uh, a ghost hunt. Uh, we now have Susan Shepard, mm-hmm. and she is a psychic medium in Parkersburg, West Virginia, and she is going to be doing messages from beyond, which is something sort of like John Edwards did, if you were familiar with him. So like the cold readings? Yeah, <laughs> if you want to call it that. <laughs> Jordan, uh, Jordan's extremely skeptical of uh, of psychics, but we'll get into that in another show. Yeah, so. well, <laughs> see, here, here's the thing. I forgot that cold readings was a bad term for what was <laughs> until, like, just you were like, um. And he says cold readings, and I'm looking at him like, okay, go ahead. I don't really know what that is. So uh, well, it's, you'll it's, explain it to me in a break? Yeah. We'll explain it to you in a break, Jordan. Okay. So, so she's going to be giving psychic <laughs> readings through all this. Is there special days when this, like, how, how long is this event? This event is one day, but it starts at 10 o'clock in the morning, and it will go probably until at least 9 o'clock. Um, once 9 o'clock hits, uh, myself and my fiancé, Jess, will actually be doing terror readings by appointment afterwards. So this is really going to be an all-day long event. We have lots of different things going on. Um, we're including lunch, which is pretty big if you've seen it on the website. Yeah. And... Uh, we're going to have an open forum so people can talk to the, any speaker they want, see what's going on. Uh, we're going to have a panel discussion. And uh, we now have people from California who are doing a nationwide documentary on dangers of the paranormal, and they actually want to do some filming at the conference. So, uh, oh, wow. We have, yeah, we have speakers coming from as far as California, Michigan, Georgia, New York. They're coming from everywhere. So, Can you give us a name of some of the, some of the speakers coming? Like, will I know who they are? Like. Um, I would, many of them are, like, large in the media. The, the largest would be The Dangers of the Paranormal, which is Sandy and Dan McWinney. Uh-huh. And they, um, their website is actually dangersoftheparanormal.com, and they have a whole list. They're, it looks like they're going to be on Sci-Fi at least ten times in this upcoming season. Oh, wow. They've been on ABC and Bravo. Um, Susan's pretty popular to West Virginia. Uh, Matt Haas from Light Paranormal, he's up in Long Island. Um, Eric Martin, he's in Pennsylvania. Joe Ward, Vince Wilson. And then we have Jonathan Moore and Stephanie Powell, who you have on tonight from yeah. uh, West Virginia Ghost. Um, they're going to be showing off some equipment. Uh, we have someone from Morgantown who is actually a cryptozoologist. So oh, wow. So we'll have that little portion covered a little bit. Uh, Cliff Williams from Worldwide Paranormal Re- Reporting Center. And then myself and Jeff and, uh, oh, the academic speaker that I was talking about. Uh, actually, one of my economics professors that I had uh, at one point is going to explain the logics of uh, spirits and how it makes sense through principles of economics. I'm kind of looking forward to hearing how he's going to explain that Yeah, one. that would be an interesting, because, I, I mean, of course, they deal with statistics and stuff. That would be a really interesting uh, discussion. So that, yeah. You know. So I'm, I'm excited for that one. Now, are, are all your speakers going to be going on at the same time? Or, I mean, are we going to be able to go to, like, different rooms and see different speakers and actually get, like, a one-on-one type of discussion with them? Or is this, like, you know, one well, after the other after the other? How it's set up is it's in the Historic Hotel Morgan, which is downtown. Mm-hmm. has a lot, of, a lot of history behind it. It was built in the early 1900s. I have the ballroom, 
which is going to be the biggest, like the main speakers. There's also a boardroom and a conference room. And ideally, what I'd like to see go on is have three speakers at a time. That way, you, maybe if you're not so much of a technical person, you can go listen to my academic speaker or you could listen to a metaphysical speaker and or vice versa. So all day, there's going to be speakers in different locations of the venue. So you have the choice each hour uh, where you want to go. And at the end of each hour, I'll be giving away either a free T-shirt or a EMF reader. So I'll be giving away some things, too. All awesome. right. I might go just for that. <laughs> <laughs> Those things get expensive. Yeah. Now, Jordan see, never passes up a deal. Yeah. Now, see, this is on uh, – well, here you go, Jordan. Actually, here's a deal for you. Uh, limited seating order before November 15th, and you receive a free conference T-shirt. Oh, yeah. And we're also – Free T-shirt. Before September 30th uh, – the basic tickets are $10 off. Nice. Oh. Now, if you, uh, you have this at Morgantown Paranormal Con, that's C-O-N dot com. Uh, we also have a link off of our website. I put up your banner. Uh, so if you click on there, you can go and buy your tickets now. And uh, early registration, you're taking them now, correct? Yep. Now, do it's you have your schedule? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, what did you say? Do you have a schedule written out already of when speakers are going to talk and, and how the the day is going to go? Right now I have a general schedule up on um, morningtownparanormalcon.com, and uh, there's actually a tab for schedule. And it's, right now it's just general. No one's really assigned to anywhere. I'm uh, going to start working on that soon. This one's a little out of date. i got to add some things in, but uh, I will have that up soon because I'll be finalizing everything. But if you go on, you can get a general idea of how things are going to operate that day. I'll tell you what, when you get a, uh, a final schedule, go ahead and shoot us an email at uh, whispers1600 at gmail.com, and okay. uh, that way we can ha make sure that the, I guess, the finalized schedule or tentative schedule is going to be up on, the, on our website, and uh, we'll be able to tell our viewers. Okay, great. Thank you. Hey, uh, Anthony, thanks a lot for calling, and uh, we'll, we'll check back with you when it gets closer to the date. All right, thanks for right, You have a good day. All right, bye. Sounds like it's going to be fun. Yeah, we actually, I have, uh, you just mentioned Susan Shepard, and I actually talked to her uh, this week, and so she's going to be actually on the show, uh, I believe on November 26th. So. Nick's on it. I know. <laughs> well, she's, uh, actually, Sherry had uh, first mentioned to me about her, because uh, Sherry was talking about Parkersburg and, um, with, when she was on the show, she mentioned the uh, Trans-Allegheny Bookstore. And when she mentioned that, she's like, well, you've got to get a hold of, you know, Susan Shepard. She actually leads tours down in Parkersburg. Um, when I was talking to her, she said her, uh, her big season's come up. She does all of her tours in, how, you know, in October. Yeah. So if anybody wants to go down to do the Haunted Parkersburg Ghost Tour, uh, they should uh, check her out. And I don't have now her. Now, she just runs that through the Halloween season, right? That's correct. Um, and I, I, off the top of my head, I do not know her uh, website address, so I need to get look that up, and I'll tell it after the break. All right, we'll, so. we'll, we'll get, we'll get to that together when we figure it out, and we'll let you guys know. Uh, we're going to take a break here on Whispers, AM 1600, WKKX, The Valley's Watchdog. We'll be right back. Attention kids of all ages from 1 to 101. Want to see Darth Vader in R2-D2? What about Spider-Man? Or how about a pirate that's traveled the seven seas or a NASA trained and certified astronaut? Kobe Bryant and Dirk Nowinski are there too. And where can you see all this and more? At the Toy and Plastic Brick Museum on Noble Street in the all-American town of Bolero, Ohio. Dan Brown and the folks at the Toy and Plastic Brick Museum are now listed in the Guinness Book of World Records last year for the largest Lego image ever and this year for the world's largest castle made entirely of Lego building blocks. Located at 4597 Noble Street in Bolero, Ohio, in the old Gravel Hill School, the museum is open Wednesday through Sunday from 12 to 5 p.m. and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And there's Entertainment Daily, a band made entirely of Lego blocks, the Lego 3, perform for everyone. School groups and kids clubs want to take a road trip? Give them a call at 740-671-8890 for group rates. 
So, for 36,000 square feet of Lego fun, head over to the All-American Town of Bolero, Ohio and visit the Toy and Plastic Brick Museum at 4597 Noble Street. Oh, and while you're there, don't forget the new space room's open now, too. Copyrighted images created under license by Lego Group. Whispers on AM 1600 WKKX, the Valley's Watchdog. It is 8.23 p.m. here in downtown Wheeling. Uh, we are brought to you by the Toy and Plastic Brick Museum in Bel Air, Ohio. And uh, soon to be a journey within. <laughs> well, you got it right that time. I know. Uh, give us a call here, 304-214-1600. If you're out of the area, toll free, 866-514-1600. Uh, and we're about to bring on uh, Stephanie Powell. Um, so, But first, Jordan, I, I do need... Um, Lola was talking to us about the ABC program, which both of us have missed, um, about UFOs, which I can't, you know, I can't believe that we did that. You know, so what, what's your excuse for missing this, this show? Band practice. Band practice, really. Music, music comes first. I don't think that counts as an excuse. Music comes first all sh- the time. You should be sacrificing. <clears throat> Sacrifice the music. And just you know, work constantly on, on doing this. All right, change the focus off me. Uh, if you're out there and you've got a ghost story that you'd like to share with us, uh, give us a call, 304-214-1600, 866-514-1600. Uh, we're really interested to find out what's been going on here in the valley and outside the valley, you know, if you're listen, listening from out of the area. You know, we love ghost stories. That's why we got into this whole thing. Now, you have, uh, you know, going into this, you have some ghost stories from when you were a kid. Uh, you don't remember those or? I'd, I'd, I'd rather keep personal stories to myself. Oh, that's, that's fine. But thank you for um, shooting those out. No, I, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, one of my uncles actually had told me a story, and uh, which is kind of funny. He uh, was laying in bed, or actually on the couch, my apologies, uh, taking a nap when he was a kid. Um, and he said he felt this cold hand come across his face, and, you know, he wakes up and, you know, startled. He doesn't see anybody in there and, you know, thinks, whoa, what's in the house, you know? And he thought this was a ghost story since he was, you know, I think he said he was 10 years old. And uh, come to find out, uh, my uncle uh, Eddie, who's a huge jokester, I guess all the way back from when he was a kid, finally admits that it was he that had hid behind the couch, puts his hand up and goes across his face, this wet, clammy hand. That's and weird. he's just laughing about it. And, you know, the other uh, uncle, uh, Mark, I mean, just... I, he doesn't know what to say. He just starts laughing, but you could just tell he was a little upset. <laughs> uh, see, here, okay, here's one story from when I was little. We had a, uh, uh, we we were living in a house in Maryland, and uh, I, my bedroom was right across from the bathroom. You know, this guy committed suicide in the basement. You know, a lot of stuff, a lot of weird stuff was going on in the house. And I remember one night, you know, I was lay, laying in bed, kind of looking it over into the bathroom, and uh, when I looked up, I saw a hand pull the shower curtain back. And, like, Ooh. nothing, nobody was in there. Nothing. Was, I freaked out so bad that I had to have a tent set up over top of my bed before I could even sleep. Well, that's, that's kind of scary. Did this tent save you from whoever was in the house? It was. It was a Transformers tent. Oh, well, I wouldn't. <laughs> Optimus Prime could do nothing against ghosts. So, um, okay, I think we're ready to bring Stephanie on. Now, sure Steph- are. Stephanie is the, um, uh, I think, the assist... Uh, Assistant Coordinator with West Virginia Ghost. Uh, West Virginia Ghost, com, com you can. Uh, uh, West Virginia Ghost uh, is the website full of true ghost stories submitted by uh, people going in that have either lived in or been to West Virginia. Uh, they've got like 400 accounts of, of ghost stories, aliens, uh, anything. Weird monsters. Yeah. Save us, Stephanie. <laughs> I'm going to go through the whole story <laughs> if you don't come on now. Yes. <laughs> How are we doing, Stephanie? Yes. Oh, you're doing really good. I'll just let you go ahead and do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're on the spot, Jordan. Go. <laughs> All right, well, back in the 16th. No, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. We do have a lot of some, you know, it's just people that, even if they're not on our message board, there's a lot of them that just come and they want to share their story. And that's where Jonathan Moore came in. Um, he definitely did a really good job of being able to archive those stories. And... That's really what it. That's how WB Go started, and it's it's just been growing ever since since 1999. So. Oh wow! Hey, we actually got a phone call. Hold on just a moment. Who we got, Lola? This is Janice from Clarksburg. Hi, Janice. 
Well, hello there. How are you? Wonderful. How are you? I am fantastic. I just wanted to call in and say hello to Stephanie and John. Hello, I'm a member. Of, I'm a member of the board. All right. And I will tell you all that yes, the the board is fantastic. It shares a lot of stories. And the thing with paranormal activity is a lot of people do not they they don't want people to think that they're crazy. And that's part of what West Virginia goes to. They, we let them know that they can share their stories with us. That's great. And that's a very important thing for a lot of us that have experienced paranormal activity, be it once or many times. Well, you sound like you have. What, what have you experienced? I have experienced many things. Um, I grew up in a house that had paranormal activity. Um, I'm living in a house right now that is just, uh, that they'll, they'll let you know that I, there's a lot of paranormal activity going on around my house, and, and I've actually, I really didn't get into it until I got a picture of something in my backyard. Oh, really? The house, yeah, I got it. It's an awesome picture, and Stephanie and John both can tell you it's an amazing shot. Now, what's, what's and, in the picture? Um, it appears to be a woman's face and her hand reaching for the camera. Oh, geez. Are, are, you, by, are you by a computer now? Uh, yeah, I'm by my laptop. Can you send it to me? <laughs> and we can put it on our website? Well, if you don't mind. Uh, no, I don't mind at all. Um, it's, you know, uh, that's not a problem whatsoever. Just tell me your website and I can send it to you. Uh, you can send it actually to whispers1600 at gmail. Dot com, and uh, we'll get it. I'll actually look at it and put it up as quick as I can. So, <laughs> and if you uh, go to whispersradio.com, I think we might have that web address put on the side. But it's whispers1600 at gmail.com. So I'm looking forward to seeing that one. Hey, thank you very much for your call. No problem. Have a good evening. <laughs> you too. Thanks, uh, if you want to call in, our number here is 304-214-1600. Toll free 866-514-1600. We are with Stephanie Powell with West Virginia Ghost. Now, Stephanie, I, I see here you've got ghost encounters. Uh, I'm looking at the story index. UFO encounters, Bigfoot encounters, uh, which stories, uh, animals and creatures. What, what's your favorite story that you've collected off, uh, on the website? I'll tell you, the, the, the one that I really got into was a story about a woman, how she was, um, her dad had died, and she was on her way somewhere at night. I can't remember the exact story. But she um, had her daughter with her, and somehow she ran off the road, hit a guardrail, and she saw she got after she got herself together, she grabbed her daughter and she started walking up towards the bank, and she saw someone with a big light, and she was like, "Oh, somebody's seen this. Somebody's coming, you know, to help me." And she got closer and she realized it was her dad. Mm, geez. And her, and then, of course, she started hearing the sirens, and she's out there by herself. Well, then she found out the next day that the only thing that was holding her from going over into the water was a telephone wire. Wow. Wow. I mean, it really, I mean, stuff like that, it really makes you stop and think that, you know, our loved ones are out there looking out for us, whether they're here or not. And that love is the most powerful emotion, because can you imagine, he's, you know, trying to save her. And her daughter. I just thought it was, it was just heartfelt, you know. That gave me goosebumps. It really it does. Did. I read it and it gave me goosebumps. <laughs> and I, I've seen a lot of things, and, and not many things really do give me goosebumps. But that just, it really stuck with me. That one story, I've just, I've remembered. Okay, and, here's one. What's the scariest story you've gotten from West Virginia? Actually, there's been a lot of scary ones. Um, I think the one was. Um, it kind of unnerved me was, um, I'll try to recount it. The uh, story was that someone, it was, uh, I guess it was back in 19, the 1970s or 80s, and they were in a uh, cabin, and the man keeps hearing somebody walking on his porch. And he keeps looking out, and there's nobody there. And then all of a sudden, he hears the doorknob try to turn. Well, of course, he grabs his gun. You know, this is West Virginia. He grabs his gun. He's going out there to get it. <laughs> And um, they find out later that um, his dad was standing on his porch and went to open his own door, and he died immediately. So it was kind of weird how the, uh, how, you know, it was 
at a totally different place, and the same thing was happening. And, I mean, that right there kind of gives you chills because you're thinking, wow, you know, what if I had to open the door? And uh, <laughs> I have nothing wow. to say about that story. <laughs> no. I, just, like, I don't either. <laughs> wow. I'm speechless. Uh, now, you, uh, Anthony mentioned earlier you're going to be at the Morgantown uh, Paranormal Conference, you and Jonathan. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. We're actually going to be doing a um, – I don't think we're really going to be speaking as much as we're going to be, I guess, presenting um, – the tools that you would use for um, an investigation, but mostly both sides, the scientific side and the spiritual side. So uh, I do the spiritual side, and Jonathan does the tech side. He's the tech guy. (laughs) And um, so it's going to be kind of neat. It'll be actually our first conference, uh, us presenting. We've been to a few, but this will be our first one presenting. Now, you actually, you know, later on in the year, you have a, a conference of your own, don't you? A bash. We're gonna tr- a bash? We're, well, it's a bash. It's a Halloween. It's, I love Halloween, and so does John, and, um, obviously. <laughs> and we're actually going to do something for the Beckley area, and it's an alternative to, <clears throat> to, have, excuse me, to having um, trick-or-treating, because I know around here it's not really that safe to be out trick-or-treating, I don't think, at dark with uh, windy roads and blind corners very true and and we're going to rent out the um, best ambulance station in MacArthur and it's going to be just a side for kids and a side for adults and there's going to be games and contests and door prizes and costume awards everything so it's going to be really fun it's like it's going to be a lot of fun that's um, great <clears throat> now um uh, the with the site now the site how long has the site been around for it's been around since 1999 it went through a change um back in 2003 so the site that you see now is the same one that came on in 2003 okay so it's one of the original sites in west virginia and you guys have actually a live show that you have every uh friday is that correct that's correct um it's called the wv ghost live and we do um we try to have some of the members on that are uh, well versed in certain things and make it interesting and have callers and it's um, on talkshow dot com. Now, what it is we, like a, a talk show in itself, like what we're doing, or do you it's share stories? But, um, we haven't shared any stories yet. We've only had um, two episodes actually. All right. We just kind of started it, so it's it's kind of new. But um, like we're having Tony and Jess on from uh, Morgantown Paranormal. We're have or and we're having those on Friday, so. Right now, it's more like a talk show, but I'm hoping to evolve it into something a little bit different. Um, and it's only you can only get it online. So that's great. There's a lot of good resources online. We actually got another phone call. If you can hold on just a moment. Yes, okay. yes we do. Go ahead. You're on the air with Jordan and Nick uh, and Hello. Mola. hello. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. You know who this is? That's my my big brother. <laughs> hey. And seriously, everything you said about the Transformer tent is absolutely true. I'll tell you what, Transformers rock. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that house was seriously scary. I lived there, too. You have and any we stories? Heard drops all night long. It, uh, why don't you tell us one of the stories? You actually got hurt, didn't you? Yeah, um, I closed the window, and the window shattered. When I shut the window, and somehow the window shattered, and uh, sliced my hand all up for some reason. And, and were you um, slamming the window shut, or? No, how old were you? You were young, weren't you? Yeah, I was, how old was I, Mom? Like 12? I was about 12, 13 years old. Then we, and every night we'd hear the basketball dribbling in, in, down in the basement. Every night uh, we'd hear a basketball just out of nowhere, just dribbling in the basement. Jeez. Yeah, I think one of the stories was uh, the guy had cancer, I believe. And, and he with killed the, himself. Yeah, oh, the, he the way. Himself. The way he dealed with it was sitting, b- bouncing b- a basketball downstairs, you know, before he dribbling it, yeah. Before he did did the deed. Yeah, and like every night that we lived there, we would hear, around three o'clock in the morning, you know, because that's like dead time and stuff. We'd hear the basketball dribbling all night long, and you know, kind of freaked us out. When we were, you know, we were we were kids then, but yeah, it was crazy stuff. Thanks, yeah. Thanks for calling in, buddy. All right, buddy. Love you. Love you, mom. Hi. Tell them I'm hi. Hi, Mom. Yeah, hi, hi Mom. <laughs> How you doing, Nick? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm sitting here with your brother, and 
Uh, but I don't know if they were laughing at me earlier or not, but I'm kind of oh, these guys are so. <laughs> I'm feeling kind of lonely here. You need to come up and protect me. Oh. <laughs> All, right. All right, thanks. All right, you guys have a good night. All right. see you. Bye. Yeah, that's my big brother from uh, Myrtle Beach. Oh, Stephanie, you know how it is. You got to sit here and and take care of these two young guys. I know how it works. <laughs> I'm sure I've you got a do. son, and I was going to tell you, I definitely think he would agree with the transformer tent thing. He, <laughs> he's a transformer, everything. I will tell you, if he was 12 or 13, I'm I'm four years younger than he is. So you know, I was a little guy, and I was scared to death. So that was the best thing to to help me out. Transformers. More than me. Whatever feel. works is what I say. <laughs> yeah. Have you had any experiences, Steph? I've been having experiences since I was eight. Oh my so, gosh. Yeah, I definitely um, have had more than my fair share over the years. Now, what kind of stuff do you deal with? I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, but you you have psychic abilities. Right? Yes, okay. I'm I'm a sensitive. I. I really never told anybody until I got older. Um, in fact, when I was around eight years old and I figured out that this was something that wasn't normal, I, at first I thought everybody believed, you know, everybody had the same unique yeah. thing that they all saw ghosts. And then I realized that none of my friends did. So, so you see I them? Kept it. I, yes, I do. That's I have. post-cognition? Um, so at first it was... You know, you would actually, it was physically there. Oh, wow. And you would see it. And then um, later, it's more, it's just in your mind. And um, I have seen a few, though, like one that's walked past me or shadows that'll, you know, be right there and you're watching them and they go around your shadow. Yeah, that's not normal. And um, so it just depends. And you said they go around your shadow? I've had, I was living in a house in Orlando and I actually had one, um, you could watch it go, or it looked like it went behind my shadow on the wall. Oh, okay. Wow. I, I was wondering if it went yeah. up, like, wouldn't go through it. I was thinking that was kind of interesting. Right. It looked like it went around it, and you're standing there going, wait a second. That's just not, that's not possible. Now, I, I of course, you're. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sorry. I, I remember uh, watching Larry King, and he had uh, psychic kids on, and uh, they were talking about how they dealt with that. I mean, how exactly, once you realized that, you know, your other friends didn't have this, did you feel like an outcast kind of, or? I mean, how did you I do it? I kind of felt cursed. I really did. Um, my family was really is really religious, and we're Baptist, and we're told wow. that this isn't normal. And so I tried to suppress it and say that it it didn't happen. But I even have my mom who told me that I used to scare her, that I would say things that would come true or know things that there's no way I knew that I could know. Yeah. And yeah. she told me when I got older, she was like, "You really did scare me." And I said, "Wow, really." <laughs> <laughs> I think I scared myself, and um, I definitely um, just learned to deal with it as I got older. I really just kind of learned on my own. Um, I never told anybody, and when I got to WB Ghost um, four years ago, I actually did tell Jonathan, and uh, it just went from there. So now, so. when you when you would see them. Where, is it like ghosts? Because I don't, and and I'd give anything to have an encounter with a ghost or a spirit or something. But um, is it like ghost whisper? Where and I'm not saying this to be funny, but where they need something from you or want something from you, or is it just that you are aware that they're there, and that's the extent of it? Well, the thing about that is. It tends to be either way. Um, I've had some that just appear, and I have no idea what they need. Mm -hmm. And they appear one time and never come back. Then you'll have some that will do things like try to wake you up. They'll shake the bed. They'll talk in your ear. Um, Mm -hmm. They'll move stuff in the room, and you can hear them. And you ask them, you know, do you need something? You know, I can help you. And they have no, no way of being able to communicate unless they're really strong. So, and some of them just go away. So I don't know if it's, I, I've always said that ghosts stay for a reason, whether it's we keep them here or they keep themselves here. Yeah. Now, so have you ever reason. actually, like, went out and tried to, to help or try to figure out what was going on? There, there's there been a few that I've tried. Um, they happen to be family members, um, that stuff like that that happened. And um, I did, was able to help the people. But the other thing is they'll give me names and you know, where do you start? It's a general name. And yeah. you don't even know what town. And 
I just moved to West Virginia a year ago, so it's not like I know all the area or know a lot of people here. Um, and so it's just kind of strange how that happens. But I do have some that just appear or like to cause a little ruckus, and then they disappear. And then they move on. Let's go terrorize somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, you can do that because I really don't like being woken up in the morning. Or in the middle of the night. <laughs> don't blame you. Well, yeah, if, somebody, if somebody ever wakes me up shaking my bed, I want answers. <laughs> First off, I'm probably going to run, but then I want to answer. <laughs> you get off right now. Yeah. now you, I've, had, I've had them yell at me. Um, You're wow. kidding. When I, when I, yeah, when I was living in Florida, um, I actually heard somebody knocking, and it sounded like kind of like because it kind of woke me up, and, and I thought it was on the door. So, of course, you know, I go look, and there's nobody there. And then I realized it wasn't on the door. It was on the wall, on the inside of the wall. Well, there's no way it would have been on the inside of the wall. These are plaster walls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I was like, okay, whatever, and I turned over and went back, you know, started to try to go back to sleep, and all of a sudden I hear somebody going, hey, you. And it was coming from behind me, and they would have had to walk. I could have seen them walk in the room. Well, I thought maybe it was my son, who was only like five at the time. Yeah. And uh, I turned around and looked, and nobody's there, and I was just like, you know what? I'm too tired to deal with this right now. You're just going to have to wait. (laughs) I love that. The moral of the story is do not ignore the dead. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's the first thing you want to learn from this. So. Now, do you give readings, too? Like, is that something, do you, like, actually act as a psychic, or do you just, you know, do your own? What, what, I, what I do right now is I can do tarot readings, and it's a little bit easier to do tarot readings because at least you have some kind of focus. Um, to, do, to do other readings, I've, I've helped people with investigations and with people with questions as far as I can, but I just haven't gotten, don't know if I want to go into the limelight and throw myself into that. That's whole, a scary um, thing. Psychic, psychic medium, because for one, I, I don't use my body. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are not allowed to enter my body. That's they good. can talk to me from, you know, however they want to do it, but they can't come into my body. So I'm I really against you. that. <laughs> you know, it's mine, and they had theirs, and they, they blew it. Yeah. yeah. And they ruined they, it. They, yeah. I have to make an apology. We were speaking with Anthony just a moment ago, and he said that you were going to give readings, kind of like the John, is it John Edwards? No, that was Susan. That was Susan, Susan Shepard. Okay. You should you have to apologize to Susan Shepard later. Yeah, I'll, I'll apologize to her because I, 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 I was feeling bad. He said cold readings, so I mean. Yeah. I was like, oh, she'll, so she'll be doing cold readings. <laughs> so I, it's, it's, it, it, see, it doesn't really bother me because if, if I were – if I weren't the way I was, I probably wouldn't believe them either. Because I'm the kind of person that's, you got to show me. I mean, you understand people uh, being skeptical, though. That's right. I do understand skeptics. I really do. Um, some, some people just don't believe that that's true. They, they think, and you do tend to, um, I'm very sensitive to people's feelings. And I can also pick up on other things. So I usually watch people before I ever even say anything. And I usually don't tell people that what I can do. Um, it tends to be either they'll start asking me a hundred million questions or it'll put them off like, no, 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 no. Yeah. You know, I don't yeah. believe in this. So I just tend to just be myself and keep it to myself a lot of the times unless they ask. So. Now, do you, oh, okay. Go I'm ahead. sorry, Jordan. I didn't see you. Uh, on the website, you have a, are you divine? Um, yes, I'm okay. dear divine. So you're dear divine. Okay. So I, I'm real quick. I'm going to read this and then I'm going to ask you about it. Uh, it says dear divine is our very own dear Abby with a twist. Instead of answering common sense questions about life, she'll be answering your paranormal-related questions. So, I mean, what kind of questions do you uh, get with this, you know, this dear divine uh, I've persona? I've actually gotten any, anything from am I crazy, um, <laughs> people that are, they sound like they might be a little bit sensitive to people that have ghosts. I've asked just regular, answered re- regular questions about, you know, um, certain aspects of ghost hunting. And up into people that really do ask me about, you know, what's going on in their house, you know. Um, I just had one that was asked me about their grandmother, if it was their grandmother that was there. And I take every question seriously. You know, I don't just, like, throw something up there for amusement. I really do put a lot of thought into those questions. I see you have one here. I was, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's hard on the radio. <laughs> I don't know when you're going to keep on going. So you have one here that says, uh, a Ouija is not a toy. Yeah, so I, I, I'm looking through these. These are actually, I'm going to have to go read these. 
Now, is that something, do you use a Ouija board when you do things? No, 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 no. no. Okay. Never use a Ouija board. <laughs> yeah. I am so against those. I don't even think they should. I don't even think they should sell them. Why? Especially to children. Well, no, why, though? Is it because it, it, it fosters this idea that you can actually, you know, that anybody can communicate? Or do you think that they really do draw spirits and that they're too dangerous to have people be around? Well, what I believe is that people don't understand that if you're going to, it's like using a power tool. If you don't know how to use it, you, sure, you shouldn't use it. Um, and people don't understand that once you open up a portal, you have a really hard time closing that portal, and anything can come through, anything. It doesn't matter what it is, and people don't understand that. So I tend to tell people, if you want to contact your, you know, your Aunt Susie that died five years ago, don't use a Ouija board. Either contact someone who is able to talk to them or just leave it alone. I mean, you really, it's not a, it's not a toy. I don't. Can, I've never touched one. I, oh, the closest I've ever been to one is in a store where they're sitting right next to me on the shelf. Yeah, it's not just a toy. It, it's actually something used like throughout like the ages oh, as a seance, you know, witchcraft type of you know tool. We had one when I was young, and I just remember it scaring the crap out of me. And then it got put in a box and put on a shelf, and we never really messed with it again because. I just, I, you know, as much as you want to believe it's the person sitting across from you that is pushing this little thing around, you know, I, I just don't believe that that's what was happening. And, and at that young, I sure didn't understand very much about spirits or any of that. It, it just, it scared me. And we put it away, and that was the end of it. We never, we never messed with it again. I'll tell you, I actually, um, I was at my mom's, my stepmom's family. And I was there, I was probably about nine or ten years old, and I was looking for a board game. And they had them in drawers. And I opened the drawer, and on top was a Ouija board. And I didn't even know what it was. I just automatically felt this really bad feeling, and I slammed the drawer shut. Ever since then, never touched one. So people don't understand that they are. They're really bad, and they're really bad if you don't know what you're doing. And then, you know, they get... Um, bad things that happen in the house. I just recently heard a story that some bad things happened, and it happens all the time. And I just really wish that people would listen and, and not take it out when they're bored. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a exactly believer. exactly how I hear. With you. We were bored one night, and we took out the Ouija board. Yep. Now, the stories yep. that you collect, like, how, how do people get up with you, you know, if because you're writing a book, right? Your, your yes, group we are. is writing a book on all these stories you've collected. Um, how does, like, let's say... You know, somebody listening tonight, you know, wants their wants to help you out and give you their story. Like, how would they go about giving that to you? All they would do is go to wvghost.com, and on the front page, there is a Contact Us button. And if you go on there, you can, it'll say, submit, uh, submit your story, and you can do it that way. And it's easy. Everything on there should be self-explanatory. Um, the, the live chats that we do are on there. All the information that we have is on there. Um, there's, um, you can actually submit them anonymously if you want to. You don't have to put your name because I know some people are like, oh, I'm afraid, you know, I've told somebody else's story. I'm afraid they'll know who it is. Yeah. You don't even have to put your name. All right. So, I mean, it's easy to do. And Now, you know, are you going to go into, like, volumes? Because, I mean, like, <laughs> you've already got, like, 400 <laughs> stories. I mean, that's, that's too much for one don't book. Don't you love Jordan's head? <laughs> but what, were, what were actually the... The criteria that we decided to choose from was that John put a rating system for the people who would read them to rate the stories. Mm -hmm. So I, we pulled from um, the, I think it was the three and higher, and then we go back and reread them and see and make sure that, you know, they're all grammatically correct and that, you know, we think they're interesting because um, I think the last count we had 120 stories. Wow. So I don't know if we might have to condense that a little bit or... Uh, <laughs> it's a big book. And that's just, I believe that's just the ghost stories. We didn't even pick from the aliens or the Bigfoots or anything. It was just ghosts. You know, I'm interested more in the alien stories. Is there any really good alien stories from uh, West Virginia you'd like to share? Nick's a ghost hunter, and he's, he's obsessed with aliens. <laughs> They're I'll coming. tell you, Nick, I am so sorry. I, I, it's not that I don't believe in aliens. It's just that it's not 
one of the interests that, you know, that I have. That's understandable. I I know nothing against you. (laughs) But if you go on there, you can read, you know, you just go through there and pick the stories that you think look interesting and um, decide which ones you like. I will do that. But it's just, um, you know, we have people on the board that are really mainly just – the creatures we they don't have they don't do anything really with the ghosts just creatures and you get you get that i think more guys are more interested in the aliens and the bigfoots and the girls <laughs> tend to be more ghosts and ghosts, ghosts, ghosts yeah. and spiritual that's that's why jordan's right. so interested in it. <laughs> <laughs> i'm actually looking up the photo uh janice just see what i put up just, with all the time this is a very interesting photo so i'm going to be putting that online uh, Jordan, you'll, you'll really like this. I'm glad I'm not showing it to you yet. Oh, so. Okay, well, that'll be, a, a, that'll be online tonight. It's a tonight. good picture. It, it is awesome. So uh, I know exactly which one she's talking about. Well, Miss Stephanie Powell, that's all the time we have today. Uh, we want to thank well, you thank very, you for very... Oh, thank you. Well, we're we're, we're definitely we're going to have you back on because uh, we, we love stories. We love local stories. And, I mean, that's you're right up our alley. We, we, we're going we're gonna to be calling you again. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. You have a good night, ma'am. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Now, this, this photo, it... it Wait, I'm me, coming over to look at okay, it. Okay, Lola's coming over to look. It took me a second because it's, you know, I've got it up here. Um, well, what's it look like? It, 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 I was trying to describe it. Give me a second here. It's Maybe I'll have Lola describe it. Lola, do you, would you like to describe this? She she just went, oh, uh-huh. so she sees you it. You have to. All right, one second. All right, you have to look at it kind of side. Well, this is on a laptop screen, so you've got that kind of distortion when you're not looking at it. You need to have it kind of tipped a little bit. And, yeah, you can see a face. You really? can You can see a face. I don't know that I would say that was a woman, though. It might well, be a I, man. I can, I can, I'm looking at it, and I'm trying, I can see the woman. I can see the man. Do you see right here the hand yep. kind of coming at the... Right. Do you have it online yet? I, I'm... I can't do everything, Jordan. Uh, what are you even here for? You expect me to be now. this Superman that can post and talk, and I can't even talk straight. You heard me earlier. <laughs> All right, go look what? at it. Take what? your headset off and walk over there and look at it. Why do they even have me on the radio? I can't talk straight. I stutter. <laughs> oh, you do. I, I oh, wow. Just... That's a oh. good story. I mean, a good picture. Jordan's yelling and screaming it at really me. It really does, but you kind of... You have it kind of that's freaky a little bit. Okay, that yeah, yeah. Gonna, yeah. that'll be up on the website tonight. You got to look. You can at definitely it. see a face and a hand. Whispersradio.com. Don't focus on the person in the background. That's what I no, was trying to do. I'm yeah. like, because I was, I, well, she said it was reaching for the camera. So I'm thinking, oh, that guy's got a yeah. camera. It's, got, no, yeah, it's, it's, it's a guy. It's up close. It's like, and then I'm just like, whoa! It looks like the the, uh, woman. What, the ectoplasmic mist. Is that what it's called? Yes. Good job. Throw some big words around. Make it sound smart. What was that again? Ectoplasmic mist. Okay. Spirit mist in pictures. Jordan so badly wants to have the Ghostbusters on. <laughs> you have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if, if if you're listening to me, publicist of Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> I keep calling. You don't return my calls. I've talked to you a few times, but you never call back. I'm very sad. I've cried about it. Jordan comforts me. My wife comforts me. Oh, it's please a shame. call me. Please it's call me back. We will not mis- misuse Mr. Aykroyd's time. Hey, guys, we got another call. Uh, is uh, it Dan Aykroyd? <laughs> no, it's not. It's Don. It's Don. There you go, Don. Don, hey, Don. how are you doing? Uh, how are you guys doing? I just wanted to tell you a, a story that just happened to me today, and it's really kind of strange. Today? Okay. Uh, over the past couple of days, I was talking to a buddy of mine, and we were talking about when we were kids. And just talking about the neighborhood gang and everything, and things that we haven't you know, thought about for years and years. And this morning, my father and I, we went fishing. And, you know, just doing the regular old BS. And he asked me, he said, did you hear about this one kid that I grew up with? And I said, no, what about him? He said, well, last week he shot himself. Oh. And I hadn't thought about that kid since the day before from nowhere. Now, what? that's weird. So you were actually just thinking about this kid? Yeah, and I hadn't thought about the kid for 20 years. And the day before, I was talking, just talking, and the guy that I was talking to obviously didn't know anything about it because he didn't mention it. And he shot himself, like, recently? like A week ago. Wow. See? And, and, and See? It, it never really sunk in. The, the, the longer this day has gone on, the more I keep thinking about it. That is weird. Yes, it is. I tell you, wow, it is. I just thought I'd add a little bit of the weirdness to the night. Were you Thank were you, you friends with him? Yeah, yeah, he was a childhood friend, but mm-hmm. a kid that 
you know, wasn't a close friend. It was one of his with kids, and we grew apart like everybody does. Uh-huh. And I hadn't seen him or thought about him for 20 years. Unbelievable. And then two days after I'm talking about him and thinking about all that stuff, you know, and he'd probably been dead for three or four days. See, and it could have been he was passing on then. Who knows? Who knows? Know. He just wanted to say goodbye. Said, yep. You know, why me? I didn't I wasn't that. It wasn't like we were as close our whole life. Yeah, but sometimes people touch you. You may have done something that he specifically always remembered that was insignificant to you, but it was important to him. I, I've been racking my brain trying to figure what, you know, if there's something. If it, it might just be coincidence. Who knows? Well, it could be. He, he but, could have been saying know. goodbye. Yep. You know, it could have been his way before he had to pass on. He had to say bye to everybody. I just thought it was just kind of strange and just wanted to kind of share it with you guys. Well, well thank thanks, you very John. much. Yeah, thanks right. for the call. Talk to you later. Bye. Now, see, because, you. you know, with that, my sister, God bless her, we grew up in the same house, and honest to God, there are things that she remembers, and she can remember them down to dialogue, that I I really, you know, yeah, I am, yeah, maybe it happened, I don't know, and I think because some things are very significant to people, and it could be that he's, he did something or said something when they were young, and this guy just, it always stuck with him, and yet, to Don, it was just, you know, an everyday occurrence, and, and he never paid any attention to it. See, of all the paranormal stories, those are the ones that get me, you know, uh, my favorites are when you get someone and they die, and but someone gets a phone call, and it happens after the fact mm-hmm. of, you know, after the oh, death yeah. time. And, you know, they call, and, you know, I was just thinking about you. I really wanted to let you know I love you and, you know, and all this, and, you know, I'm sorry I haven't been able to talk to you. And then, you know, you, you're thinking of it, oh, okay, well, that was kind of weird that they called, and then... You find out what they're dead, and then they died on Friday. But they called me Saturday. Saturday, you yeah. know, and it's just like, and then I mean, I even get goosebumps right now just thinking about because I've read a lot of those stories, and that's just nothing to say about them. It's just wow, you know. I know, I know. I do now, Jordan. Have the picture. It's up. Uh, yeah, I think I put Janice's picture. It's up at the top of the page. Click on it, and you can actually see it larger. I have to reduce it to get it onto the web uh, website. And if you see there, you'll if you go to the web page, I'm I'm going to it now. Um, Whis- know whispersradio.com. It will say pictures from Janice. Yes, whispersradio.com. It says no comments right now, but click if you click on that no comments, and it'll take you and you can leave it and let us know what you think. I'm sure Janice will check you know check out yeah. those comments later. Uh, let her let her know what you think. And um, what's that? Who do we got next week? Oh, who do we have next week? I'm Jordan's whisp. You know mouthing stuff to me <laughs> we have don gordon or i'm sorry dan gordon stop rushing me i will talk okay he's a uh, author with uh, a <laughs> baseball uh it's oh a, that's right steve is really anxious yeah to steve is anxious it says uh, he first experienced the magic of fenway in the summer of 1975 uh he and uh, thomas j watson uh well oh, with, with a thomas j watson where the heck is this uh it's baseball. There's Speak ghosts. Of the devil. I mean, Jesus. Oh, this the isn't the ghost. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. The devil's Steve. on the line. <laughs> Hello. Good evening. Hey, Steve. I, I guess I'm the devil. Yeah, according to what you said, it. I did not say that. I. <laughs> you do it for tomorrow. Said, oh, ne- never mind. I know what I said. What's up, Steve? Hey, look, listen to what I have to deal with here. Well, first off, I wanted to say hi, Willa. How are you, dear? Hello, Steve. And, uh, <laughs> and I thank you guys for inviting me to the September 24th show. I'll certainly be there. The oh. reason that I wanted to call is, of course, to extend your night a little bit longer and ask, Owen and I were talking earlier about the supposed UFO sighting up in Ogilvy and, and this and that. I, I'm wondering if anybody recently has called and said, yeah, I have a grandfather who saw that or anything like that. I'm still, and now you're talking about the, uh, Bashful just so everybody knows, the Bashful Billy yeah. incident where a UFO crash landed and dropped him off and uh, there was a burned woman and all that. And nobody yeah, has, all that. Yeah, I mean, all, I mean, all I, that. I told Lola a couple of times that, you know, we went UFO crazy when I was a kid around here and I've just never heard any support testimony and i wonder if you guys have um, i've never heard other than the newspaper that's all we found i mean there was supposedly a lot of people that lived in uh, the vineyard hill area yeah. that saw this uh this creature uh it was reported in the newspaper as being a burned woman because uh from what frank Fashino was telling me uh, off the air you know the person that you know the alien in this craft was 
it was injured. I mean, it had been shot at by, you know, the, the U.S. Air Force. And they dropped him off kind of because he couldn't survive if he had stayed in the craft because it was on fire and it was, you know, and I, which I thought was weird. But he told, told me that military people had said this is what, you know, this is standard operating procedure. You'd stop, lay off the injured uh, person, and they try to make it to a high ground to get picked up. So, I mean, if anybody, it was in 1952, I believe September, so anybody that remembers that time, anything at all, you know, give us a, an email, whispers1600 at gmail.com. I'm sure you could even call here and let Lola or whoever's on the air, yeah. you know, they'll give, give you a way to get in contact with us. We'd love to hear your story. So, yeah. that's yeah, your cost. The UFO craze that I was talking about and then I uh, told Lola about was, I believe in the 70s sometime. Now, I don't know if it was produced by the Flower Children or if it was real. I just know that it went through the valley. And, again, I've never heard anybody say, I saw a UFO here in the Ohio Valley. Uh, go down to Point Pleasant, and you'll ha hear a lot of people yeah, with their stories. A lot of people. You know, they're, they're part of the valley, too, and they, they were hit hard and personal. Jordan, real quick, one word, road trip. We <laughs> <laughs> use Steve and Lola. Just burn the roads up, go straight down, and look for Mothman. I am always up for a road trip. <laughs> I was reading your thing on uh, MySpace about Roni's Point. That, uh, I've always wanted to go up there. I just went up just real quick. I don't want to get the uh, cops coming after me, but yeah. it is a very eerie-looking place. So I'll but, tell you this, and this, you know, I know this from experience. Um, if you contact the individual, well, all you have to do really now, and I'll say this on the air, is contact the Ohio County Sheriff's Department. Uh, and if you want to go up there, you're not going to be able to go inside of any of the buildings, but if you want to go up there and look around, it's actually the county farm property. Yeah. 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 And they'll, they'll let you go up there as long as you're announced. Uh, there is a caretaker slash deputy that lives up there. But if you go unannounced, that's when the no trespassing signs are enforced. I'm announcing myself. And so there's, a lot of them. there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. If you just want to go up there, I'm telling you, if you want to go up, actually let me know, and, and I'll go up with you. because well, that would be awesome. That's the coolest place in the world. All right. Cool. Let's, okay. Thanks a lot, Steve. All right. I, I think well, Lola finally wants to be done with her work. Lola, Lola wants to go home. She's yeah. threatening well, us. I Please mean, let us go. go. All, all she did was host a radio show and then do my show. I mean, if you guys want to talk about something else, we sure can. I don't have to, guys. I mean, Lola, we've been on the air for an hour. I mean, we can keep going. Yeah, well, who's got the buttons here, kids? <laughs> okay, we're for it, and we're going to have to go. So, have a good night, uh, we're Steve. We're always reminded in a daily fashion the power of Lola. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Good night, Steve. See you, Steve. Bye, Steve. Good night. God bless. Uh, that's Steve. Steve's going to be joining us next week with uh, Dan Gordon. Dan Don Gordon. Gordon. Dan, Dan -E -N. you were rushing me. I was threatened. And uh, Dan wrote the book Haunted Baseball and is going to share with mm -hmm. us stories actually from uh, national baseball players, you know, and their ghost stories. Major yeah. League, Mr. No Sports. Whatever. Wow. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Until next week, everybody, don't be afraid, only believe. Oh, save me from myself.